Maintenance therapy is an important component of the treatment of patients with advanced ovarian cancer. And this has really transformed our management of advanced stage ovarian cancer in the last three years. And what we've really discovered is that we have now several opportunities for maintenance treatment during therapy. And I'll start in the frontline setting. Again, based on the results of both PRIMA as well as the Paola 1 trial, we now have opportunities for maintenance PARP inhibition in the frontline setting for an all-comer population, and that's niraparib. And that's, again, based on an improvement in the median progression-free survival. The goal being to extend the interval of time in which the patient is in remission, which will potentially facilitate alternate treatment options down the line. In the Paola 1 study, the combination of bevacizumab plus olaparib was compared against bevacizumab plus placebo. And in that patient population, the approval was in those with a homologous recombination deficiency, who again appeared to have a significant benefit over bevacizumab plus placebo with the addition of a maintenance olaparib regimen. And both of these studies followed the approval of maintenance single agent olaparib in 2018, and that was based on the SOLO1 trial, specifically in the BRCA mutated germline or somatic patient population. So we went from having a maintenance strategy with olaparib, specifically in the BRCA mutated population, to now having maintenance opportunities with niraparib in the all comer population, or olaparib plus bevacizumab in patients who are homologous recombination deficient, including those with a BRCA mutation. And just briefly, we touch on the fact again that bevacizumab was the initial maintenance strategy that was approved for us quite a while back as an anti-angiogenic agent. And some patients may be on bevacizumab with chemotherapy and continued on maintenance bevacizumab. And then now you get into the discussion about, well, how can we layer these maintenance approaches? And is there relevance to sequentially applying these medications versus using them in combination? And that data is yet to be uh, developed. In the platinum sensitive recurrent setting, meaning patients who have responded to their most recent penultimate platinum regimen. Maintenance strategies, again, include single agent bevacizumab as an anti-angiogenic agent, or potentially maintenance PARP inhibition, again, with three options, niraparib, olaparib, and rucaparib, both based on a meaningful improvement in the median progression-free survival with incorporation of maintenance treatment. So I like to think that where we are right now is maintenance has become and is incorporated in the management of our patients. We now have maintenance opportunities in the frontline setting, and we have maintenance opportunities in the platinum sensitive recurrent setting. And it's our obligation to try to sit with our patients, figure out which strategy and which drug regimen may be the most appropriate for them based on their disease status and their tumor testing. Because again, all of this hinges on the information that we get from genetic testing, germline assessments of BRCA1 and 2, genomic assessment of the tumor, looking at this genomic signature of homologous recombination deficiency, of which one component is loss of heterozygosity or LOH, and potentially other aberrations that we can identify in gene sequencing, such as RAD51C or 51D mutations, not all of which always equate to a high LOH score. I do anticipate that maintenance therapy is going to become ubiquitous in the ovarian cancer space. I think that there was very early and aggressive adoption of olaparib in the BRCA mutated patients. Many of us are excited that now that has expanded beyond BRCA to include HRD and all comers as potential options with the combination regimens or single agent niraparib. And certainly in the platinum sensitive recurrent setting where our goal is to truly extend that chemotherapy free interval, incorporation of a maintenance PARP inhibition is also an attractive option. So I would argue that maintenance therapy in ovarian cancer is here to stay, both in the frontline setting and in the uh, platinum-sensitive recurrent setting.